affordable. So then, for one final time this weekend, two players going for the bull to determine who will have 25. the advantage in this fourth final on the Women's Series in 2024. These two players met in the first final 25. of the weekend and now go head-to-head -head in the last. Fallon Sherrick victorious oh, yesterday, of course. Will it be repeat or revenge in this one? Well, the head-to-head -head record is actually really fascinating because they've met 21 times previously. Bo victorious in 14 of them, 96. including nine on the bounce at one stage, including their first eight at the Women's Series. But since Fallon managed to get the better of Bo in the final of Event 60. 20 last year here in Wigan, she's won four on the spin against Bow and Arrow. And there's also an added incentive 59. in this one, Colin Lloyd, because we've been focusing on the women's match play race and that particular order of merit. Well, Bo Greaves was That's head free. and shoulders ahead of the rest of the field towards the back end of last year. But a win for Fallon Cherokee, and she'll leapfrog her and go top. And I'm pretty sure that Fallon Cherokee will be very much aware of that. So, where's your 10 pence in this one? <laughs> it's going to be a very tight, close affair, I think. I think we could be going all the way 65. in this game. They've both been playing some good stuff. Fallon has looked really good. She looked really good in that semi-final against Brazil. Uh, a little while ago. 19, 14, 12, and 215 darters. It's world class darts. But, and I don't 60. mean this disrespectfully towards Naziri, Bo is a different kettle of fish altogether. Seventy six. Well, Bo needs to take this out really to keep hold of throw. You don't want to lose your throw in the very first leg. But she's going to be relying 60. on Fallon Sherrick missing three at the outer ring. Game shot. Which she doesn't do. Pins double 16 at the first time of asking for a 16 dart break of throw. I think that's the one thing we can both agree on, Abigail, isn't it? In that semi final, Fallon Sherrick that she played. She didn't get it all her own way. But she was very, very clinical when it comes to the finishing. Even popped out big jewels. She did indeed. You are so eager for that to stick, aren't you? You're not uh, going to quit until I start calling it that. I've been, I've been working on Rod <laughs> Stuck for ages, but he just won't have it. Some might say you need to take the hint, Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> now, very impressive weekend from... 100. Both of these players, Makuru Suzuki as well, of course. Just seen her leaving the building. Big smile on her face because 55. she was victorious in event three and just lost out in the semi final to Bo Greaves. So, a successful 100. weekend for her. We've seen a number of different finalists. It's been great to see six different finalists across the four events 140 a real highlight of just how much this game is advancing but also 96. really pleasing really exciting when we do get these regulars back in the final yeah she thought that was sat perfectly for a bedfellow wasn't to be not a bad cover, treble 18, though. Well, she's really putting the pressure here 84. on Bo Greaves, is Fallon Sherrick. 16 for another Big leg. Shot. That's back-to-back -back 16 dart legs from Sherrick. Averaging around the 94 mark. As Bo Greaves is languishing back 80 and a half. Very early days, but 140. 
with that 2 0 advantage, you'd have to say advantage of Alan Sherrick. 96. I think she was totally disgusted with that second dart there, wasn't she? She looked up to the heavens, especially after hitting such a plum treble 21st dart. 96. Yeah, furious with that, but it's not I think it's fair to say at the moment this game a reflection of the level that both players have been playing at over the course of this fourth women's series event of the weekend 133 Fallon Sherrick just seems to have been a little more steadily playing at a higher level than 60 Bo Greaves and as we mentioned a little earlier, it really is remarkable, isn't it? At this stage of the day, Fallon Sherrick was here from about probably half eight yesterday morning, here almost until the bitter 96. end yesterday. And the same again today, she has thrown a lot of darts over the course of this weekend. And she's still able to produce this level. 56. Yeah, very much so. It's not just on these streaming board that she's playing. She's playing on the outer boards as well, as well as practising. Yeah, you already feel this is a hugely important juncture in yeah, this I'm match. Sure. I think the game may have started to run away from Bo Greaves there. Had she missed that dart at double 16, then look. You would, you certainly wouldn't have said it was game over had well, Fallon Cherrick led 3-0, but... It would have been one almighty challenge given the disparity in the averages as well of the two players and Bo Greaves just letting us know how displeased she was. 28. I think it was something like... Every time into the five. Yeah, five, yeah, five every what time, I'm yeah. So I'm going to ask you something now then, Abby. Who do you... Can you think of a couple of ladies that have walked out here, apart from these two ladies, obviously uh, Suzuki? A couple of ladies that can be happy with their weekend's performance? Absolutely, there are plenty. Katie Sheldon has already mm -hmm. eclipsed what she managed to do in the entirety of 2023 by making a semi-final and a final this weekend. Her best return last year, two quarter finals. She'll be very pleased with how the weekend has gone. I think Kirsi Vinakainen will be 41. very pleased mm -hmm to have recorded some really quite spectacular victories herself. I think there are elements for Dita Hedman yeah. making her first final in quite some time. Yeah. Many positives for her to take. And I think as well, Desiree Hill, who we so. saw in action against Fallon Sherrick, mm. she'll be really pleased with the certain aspects, having not won a game yesterday on debut to then have a run to the semi-final and one to the last 16 today. I think there are plenty of positives for her to take. I think Robin Byrne can probably hold her head up high as well. She um, she threw some good stuff. She walked into a ramp and fell in the twice. She can go away knowing that she played some good stuff. And like she did say to you, Abigail, if I could hit my doubles, yeah. I'd be winning some more games. Game yeah, shot. There's an 18 dart leg for Fallon Sherrick, who is certainly hitting her doubles in this contest. Moves within two of it. And I think the way 60. that things are going in this contest, Fallon Sherrick would have been expecting a much sterner examination than she's getting at the moment. Bo Greaves 59. with a mid-70s average. I think Fallon Sherrick would have been expecting a completely different challenge to the one she's 96. getting right now. Well, the leg that Bo won, she hit the double 16 with her last dart. And who's to say that if she had have missed that, that Fallon could possibly be 4-0 up. 42. Like we said, it, it, it has been a long, long day for the ladies. 
you know, they probably are getting a, a little bit tired now. And 58. It's possibly shown now that Bo's just a little bit more tired than Fallon. She's like a machine, isn't she? Still being able to produce this level after two grueling days. Her demeanor's not changed. And this is what she was like at the back end of 2023 as well. She had some targets. She had things that she knew what she on? needed to do in order to reach them. So it's going to be quite interesting if it is Fallon Sherrick we speak to at the end of this match to see what it is that's driving her in particular this year. 99. Well, Fallon has taken the throw away from Bo Greaves now. Both got comfortable three dart finishes. And by 60. that, I mean they can stay in the same area. move within one of her second women's series title of the weekend. Game shot. Fallon Sherrick pins tops and it would be a victory of course that would mean she ends the weekend top of both of the order of merit in the women's game. One hundred. Well deserved a treble there really after those first two darts. She 60. just looks so in control of everything at the moment, doesn't she? Everything in check. And when we've got a confident Fallon 97. playing at a high level, it really is a joy to watch. We'd hope from a selfish point of view that both of these players were at the top of their game in this particular contest. We want to see them go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but... Unfortunately, Bo Greaves just hasn't been able to produce that level in this particular fixture. No, she's thrown some great stuff here, is Fallon Sherrick. Left herself the big fish. 55. Which we've seen a hit in the semi final a little bit earlier. 98. Well, really applying the pressure now to Bo Greaves. I feel that Bo Greaves here needs a max to put any pressure on that 72 56 left on Fallon Sherrick well Fallon Sherrick now then 72 32 wow. my colleague Abigail said she's a machine she missed the big number don't see her do that very often but she's coming back three darts 30. For tops. Double ten now. Twenty. Well. Doesn't want it. Well. What can Bo Greaves do with this 160? Well, that's a great first dart. 140. Well, Fallon knows now that she really does need to finish this off. Yeah. The match. Fallon Sherrick, Women's Series Event 4 winner. Second title of the weekend. Absolutely fantastic darts today. She played fantastic in the semi finals <laughs> against Azari. And she's just played absolutely no. fabulous there no, against no, Bo Greaves. <laughs> And she's so now joined by my co-commentator, Abigail Overdose, to get her comments on how the weekend's gone. Alan Sherrick, two titles this weekend, semi-finals in the other two events. You must be incredibly pleased, not just with the results, but the way you've played this weekend. Yeah, no, I'm really happy with how I've played and the results that I've got this weekend, you know, because coming into it, we've had such a big gap from the last one. I was a bit like... Or how, how am I going to perform and stuff? But I think you know, going to the challenge tour last weekend, I think that really helped. 
I was going to ask, what did you take from that weekend in Hildesheim? Because you did have a really good run to the last 16, didn't you? Yeah, no, I went into that trying to get like match practice. And, you know, the first couple of days, I think the first couple of comps, I was not great at all. And I was like, oh, come on, you need to kind of perfect your game a little bit more. And then towards the end of it, I got better. And especially my game against Sandy Bolton, you know, it gave me a boost of confidence. And then, yeah, I had that run. And you've looked so focused all weekend here at the Women's Series. What are the main names? Because you are now sat top of the Order of Merit. That must have been high up on your list of achievements for this year. What are the main things driving you in 2024? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm quite happy to be, like, you know, top. If I can finish top, that'd be amazing, because I don't think I've ever finished top. <laughs> um, main objectives is to, obviously, you know, get to the stages again and get to the qualifiers, to, like, the Grand Slam and all that. But yeah, no, just to kind of get my game back to where it was. That was my main objective this year because I know I've got the game. I just want to produce it a bit more. And what work have you been putting in? Because it certainly looks at the moment like you are pretty close to that happening because the big finishes have been there, the scoring has been there. You must feel very, very close to that level right now. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of it is I'm just keeping myself calm um, and that's what... You know, I was struggling with because I was just getting so, you know, high tempered and stuff, and I was beating myself up. And then now I'm just kind of relaxing, playing my own game. And, you know, if someone beats me, then fair enough, you know, they play better. And I'm just not getting so agitated about it all now. I'm just kind of relaxing, playing, and, you know, I'm just full of confidence. And just a question on the women's series as a whole, because we've seen six different finalists over the course of the four events this weekend. It must please you to see that so many women now are competing at the latter stages and you're really having to produce your best more and more often. Yeah, I'm not happy about <laughs> producing my best more often. Um, but it's bringing but yeah. the best out of you, isn't no, it? Oh yeah, 100%. And, you know, with all the women here, you know, you've seen, like you said, seeing different people coming through now and, you know, it just makes that massive gap in the women games closing up and, you know, they all want to play at the match play, do you know what I mean? They all want to get to Blackpool. They, that's their ambition and, you know, they want to strive and, you know, be the best they can. And for you personally, what would you like to see the next step be for the women's game? Because there is now a wait, of course, until April for the next block of women's series events. Would you like to maybe have a few more tournaments in the calendar? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, there's never, you know, anything wrong with putting more competitions on during, you know, the gaps and stuff. But yeah, more women's comps would be amazing. And what are your aims in between now and that next block? Practice. <laughs> <laughs> Practice, try and play more, you know, challenge tour if there's anyone and, you know, just keeping my game there. Absolutely. Well, very, very, very well done this weekend. Two titles for the Queen of the Palace made the semi-final of the other two events. We'll be back with more women's series action in April, but plenty of darts to keep across this week because we've got Premier League action in Belfast on Thursday before the second Euro Tour event of the year in Germany next weekend. So we'll see you very soon on PDC TV.